Hey guys, Dantix here, back with another Cyberpunk 2077 video. Today, I'm bringing you an in-depth breakdown of the postcards from Night City trailer, including the crazy amounts of variety we're getting, all the cheeky things you may have missed, like the BJ scene, the gangs, the game over screen, and more. There's a, there's a lot to get through, but before we start, be sure to subscribe. You can always unsubscribe whenever you want, and be sure to check out my comp to win a copy of the game. Okay. Let's not waste any more time and get right into it. Let's start with the metaphorical and literal opening of the blinds. The same blinds were opened in the 48 minute gameplay demo, so if we compare the two, we'll see the game has changed substantially. We can see the two satellites and air vents are the same on both. There's a rail and trees on the top of the building. The mac and cheeses on the left is out of frame right now, but everything else has more or less changed in some way. You'll notice the brain dancing was teased two years before it was discussed as well. In my opinion, the current version seems more dense and more alive as well as looking crisper, but let me know what you think. Here we have a brief glimpse of the density of Night City. We talked about the verticality, but you can really see it here. What's very obvious is an increase of advertisements placed around the city. You'll start seeing the same ones you've seen in screenshots, the art book and other mediums. Ads bring some immersion into a digital city for me as you feel more a part of something that's breathing without you. Take note of the sunbeams passing through the buildings as the camera pans, the airship and drones, even the sheer diversity in this one area. We see Chinese lanterns but across the street is a commercial and residential area with what seems to be a sky rail above. If you travel downwards, you get to the mean streets with side stalls. Yes, there are flying cars, but no, you can't drive one. That honor is reserved for law enforcement and the corpos. Here's one such stall where we're offered undisclosed meat. It's probably takoyaki though. We can see the bottom right that it cost 13 eddies to buy that sushi platter. It's also known we'll be able to eat and drink in Cyberpunk, and although it's not needed to survive, doing so will offer buffs you probably need to explore the city to try different foods. Look at the detail here though. You see the vein on the chef's arm. Soft drinks unneatly stacked. Even the paper towels aren't neatly placed. One detail I hope you caught on by now is that uh, Johnny Silverhand is sitting in the background. Now, I'm not sure if this is a story scene where you eat and talk with him, or if he lingers around you everywhere you go during gameplay. If you sit down, will he sit with you? Either way, there is some degree of separation between you and him because you're both not sitting together, so this clearly isn't a business call. It also looks like Adam Jensen from Deus Ex is sitting next to you when you turn around to eat, and then Johnny is gone. <laughs> we know he isn't physically there and he's a projection in your head, so it leans to the theory of the latter possibility. Here we see what I assume is Weldon Holt running for mayor, shaking the hands of the locals for the media. Night City is a fake place, and fake places must have politicians to keep it that way. Here's another look at verticality, but up and down. This underbridge section is packed with detail. Look at the boxes and the newspaper on the ground. Then we have the man in virtual reality on the street, probably to escape his shitty life. I think that XXL burrito would have helped me escape, personally. But look at the graffiti on the bench. Look at the detail. Look at the calligraphy required to write tits so beautifully. <laughs> Who would have thought I'd be so blown away by graffiti on a bench in a game? However, his neckerchief is clipping through his neck, which looks kind of odd, but this is rendered in game, so things like that are bound to happen. Here we see one of Night City's many mega buildings from the inside. They're huge and host their own community. We see here a woman smoking on the balcony overlooking some businesses like Data Inc. with residential apartments above them. No doubt there'll be a lot going on in these. Now here we see another Ripper dock, different to the one we interacted with in the 48 minute demo. This looks like it may be a brain dance as you're seeing through someone else's eyes right now, but whoever it is, you take a drag with your very clearly cybertized arms. Who knows what else you're about to get done. So here we see some tall buildings, one or maybe all of those at the bottom are Petrochem, the world's largest producer of synthetic alcohol fuel, a major megacorp. In the middle of the roundabout, we see two fish circling, one red and one blue. To see them up close, we have to skip far ahead in the video. It seems to be some kind of Asian cultural event in Night City. It very well might be New Year, but I don't really want to commit to that. Now we're outside a nightclub. Inside, checking out the sparky haired DJ, dancing with Jackie, then a cute nightclub patron who's wearing a, a beanie out 
in a club. The fashion sense here is quite low, so I suspect it's not the highest end place. Then Jackie gets a little too close to male V, so he pushes him off, playfully of course. Then it looks to be in the VIP area of the club. If you play the footage back and forth, it looks like you're kind of dancing with this weirdo, although fairly sure you're shoving her as well. Then we have an outside look of a club. Check out the awesome reflections on the pavement though. Keep in mind, this is during the day, but in the shade. Another scene now with some, uh, well, interesting ads. <laughs> These are some lovely puppies. I mean, dogs being fed by some very fake puppies. <laughs> Above that is another suggestive ad, king size. Do note the variety of MPC in the world. I don't think I've seen the same one reused yet. Let me know if you do. Then we see some strippers at Lizzie's Bar, the Mox Braindance Club, along with some people brain dancing. It seems you can do drugs at this venue as it shows V taking a pill. It's unclear if this is part of an event or is something you can do as you choose, but we know that drugs will enhance V's stats in some way and some may have side effects too. So then we have a heavily modified person, either blood or a tattoo on his right hand, opening up a bottle while he gets oral sex from a lady. <laughs> it definitely doesn't look like V, so this leads me to believe this is what you can get up to if you brain dance. We know according to ESRB rating that players can encounter events where they have the option to engage in sexual activities with other main characters or prostitutes. These brief sex scenes from a first person perspective depict partially nude characters moaning suggestively while moving through various poses. Some scenes contain brief depictions of thrusting motions, and this is the key part, other scenes depict a character's head moving towards a partner's crotch. So it's highly likely that this is the case. Well done CDPR for having an extreme level of bravery here. I hope Kotaku or other outrage journalist sites don't use this to drum up fake outrage, just please leave this game alone. There's more. Here we see V walking up to a stripper and offering her a drink. Is this something we can do organically as well or is this an event? It seems kind of organic to me. The stripper turns and looks at V as to accept. She has a zip on her panties for easy access so no doubt she's available for other services. I have to wonder if this game will be safe to stream. <laughs> do note that there are male strippers there for those more into a masculine body so fret not, there will be more than enough debauchery for all. The next few clips are about the homeless and the destitute in Night City. We see the homeless here playing what seems to be a Game Boy. Some of you might be too young to know what that is, but it looks damn close. At least they have something to entertain themselves, and this does show that the world is living without you. Here we have some more homeless areas of Night City. Aliens kidnapped his wife and kids help him celebrate. <laughs> yes sir, I will by buying you a beer. You need it. Note that it even seems like the poor have cyberware, it's just the way of the future I guess. Some more back alleys with homeless, another homeless putting away a can she found in the trash, another case of breathing world, NPCs having more than just simple idle animations. Now we have some violence, here is some camera footage of a robbery. It's unclear if you're seeing this during a brain dance or looking at the actual footage but the perps are making off with a duffel bag of some kind and shooting inside, which blows the lights out. In the next scene, we see a lady being assaulted and used as a hostage. It looks like a member of the same gang just seconds after the first scene, as shown by the time and date at the top left, and the fact that it switched from camera 10 to camera 11 in the top right. Seems like you're analyzing what happened during the robbery. I'm personally a fan of detective type missions. Now, we have a car exploding. If I slow it down for you, you can see just how dynamic the lighting really is. You feel the explosion more as it lights the screen up. The car also flies high into the air and we see a lot of shrapnel debris. Little details like this always matter. Then we have what seems to be a Tiger Claw member firing an SMG against the NCPD who's firing back with a simple pistol and no real body mods because, well, the basic police can't afford them. Note that the police car is totaled, on fire and a husk, showing that it must have exploded prior. Maybe he was using it as cover and the tiger claw forced him out of it. It then cuts to a landscape scene where we can see the shootout. Bets on who you think is going to win here. Now it's unclear who this is, but he's heavily armed and very possibly a member of the Cyborg Suppression Unit or MaxTac. 
There are two cars and a van destroyed in the background and badasses don't look at explosions so it had to have been him, right? And then a close up of the damage and a dude walking past like it's just a regular day in Night City. Damn, the, the residents of Night City must really see shit day to day. Speaking of seeing shit, we have some dead bodies just chilling on the road on a pedestrian crossing, suggesting they were possibly run over by some lunatic. Now we see some more heavily armed members of the NCPD, complete with a mech or Gundam-like suit. It's hard to tell if there's someone inside of that, but it looks to be heavily armed and armoured, just chilling on the street with the officer. Once again, the community will not really bothered at all by what's next to them. It's just another day. Then we have some more heavily modified individuals. How does this one eat? Does he have to swap in and out jaws? Does his cyber esophagus get rusty? I have so many questions. Now, this guy is dressed like one of the pimps from the Mox Club, but it seems to be a ripper doc, fixing this chick's cyber mouth. Can someone explain to me why on earth you'd get a cyber mouth? I just, I just don't understand it. It seems like she's not having a good time as he's zapping her or soldering her up and she's fully conscious. And then we have some dude getting bitch slapped by some badass who, when we zoom out, looks to be a member of the Maelstrom gang, but it could be Mercs for Arasaka. So maybe they're interrogating this person for information the old fashioned way without the brain dancing. It cuts to the side and another member of whichever gang it is, is looting the body in this scene. This is not a fun place to be, it could very well be a shakedown. But what's with this spiky cyber hair? I, I guess it serves as both protection and offense and probably save you a lot of money on haircuts. It seems like there may have been some kind of event here based on the speakers and the lights in the background. Cut to later and we see some body bags. This may be the same scene with a member of the Tiger's Claw being arrested, but it's hard to say. Moving on, we see V driving a heavily damaged car. It's hard to see out of the cracked window, but what is notable is that the car has a heads up display of a few things, including what looks to be a pistol. The resolution is too low, but we know you can fire your pistol out of a car while driving, so perhaps this tracks your ammo here. There are some other standard gauges like oil and battery, as well as speed and time. There's a cool area to the right with a keypad probably connecting to your phone. It's the little details. Now, here is a confirmed member of the Max Tac, the Cyborg Suppression Unit. These badasses use the best tech to bring down heavily modified individuals who enter states of cyber psychosis. He looks to be carrying a tech rifle or shotgun and is backed up by another member with a pistol. These guys will hunt you down if you get too high on the wanted meter by doing too many conspicuous criminal activities like slaughtering civilians. V is having a bad day, throwing a tooth into the sink and looking quite defeated in the mirror. Jackie is in the background and this seems fairly early on. Just look at the detail man, that sink, if you remove the arms it looks damn near real. We can see just how heavily guarded fixes are in Night City. This one in particular I believe you'll meet on the street kid path. It'll be around the Hayington area alongside local gangs, just don't forget your roots essay. I love how doing your job doesn't mean just walking up to the character and pressing a button. It shows V walking through guards, handing him a briefcase and talking with him like he's a real person and not a static NPC waiting for you to come back. Then we have Jackie and V loading up for a mission, most likely the Maelstrom gang mission, getting some grenades and a sweet power rifle. Just look at the effect of the gun runner handing V a weapon. It, it has weight to it, he lets go and the weight kicks in, dropping into V's hand like it isn't a toy. Then we have another scene with gang members being dicks to a civilian in an alley, one knocking one down, another shooting them. Now I assume this is a random encounter, like discussed in my previous video, when you walk the streets. In this case V decides to intervene, causing the Maelstrom member that was shooting the civilian to attack, jumping at you and hitting you with the butt of her gun. She steps back and shoots while the one in the background behind cover shoots you. The other member to the left hits you with a makeshift blade which ends up killing you. We see here the game over screen, critical system failure as read by your Kiroshi optical implants, the only known cyberware you absolutely must get. I believe the rest you can avoid but maybe potentially the subdermal grip is compulsory as well. Fatal brain damage, flat lined TNC medical center. You dead, it's time to reload. But after we see Johnny Silverhand talking to you in your apartment. The same blinds you saw at the start of the video, so it's confirmed. 
it seems you may be discussing a mission or debriefing with him. The details on the arm is exquisite, but his hair looks kind of unnatural to me. Maybe it's the light peering through. Now his dog tags are clipping through his chest armor as well, which I kind of forgive because he's physically not there after all. Well, as far as we know, at least. Look at those elbow spikes. Now he wouldn't want to rest his elbows on his lap now, would he? Then we cut to that broken Ferris wheel we saw next to the tents of the homeless before. We get a look at the fringe districts of Night City as well as the Badlands. Some more high rises. Take a look in the windows. It seems the interiors are modeled, which is just nuts. Then we have an Arasaka complex. It's unclear what this is, but it seems like a mansion for VIP as the top has a pool area with umbrellas. The guards are well dressed and clearly well taken care of. The area has a sense of wealth to it. My god, all the grass seems modeled as well. <laughs> Jesus, I hope that draw distance is something we can expect at release. There's a dragon hollow in the background, similar to the fish before, which further suggests New Year, but still not going to commit to that. Some more streets of Night City. You'll notice each building is quite different to the last, this one having some checkerboard lights. We see some more scenes of the city with nothing particularly notable, but let me run through them for your viewing pleasure. Let's stop here and look at the Lizzie's Bar Mindfuck ad. Mindfuck just gained a new meaning. <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> Using brain dancing as a means of having sex seems to be common practice, and the city has no shame in advertising it. Going through some more of the city's diversity, until we get to this bird statue here, which seems to be moving. Might be a restaurant for the high end. Then finally, we have a bird's eye view of the city and my God, it's breathtaking. The scrolling up hollow ads are a great idea, but I wonder how hard it is to kind of sleep if you can't shut the blinds in this city. If you're homeless, you're just perpetually in light. Now, during the trailer, we had random segments of people of Night City either being on TV or being viewed in cutscenes. I cut them all and put them here at the end so we can check them out all at once. Oh my god, Juanita here. Today's news is Nova Max. How we feeling today? Because I feel amazing. And as always, your business is my business. We are fucked, America. And I don't know how we're going to fix it. United States. Sleep tight, Night City. The grass ain't greener anywhere else. Who was Richard Knight? As we see, there really isn't anything notable except the media knows that the city is in chaos, the politicians are competing for power, the glamorous are glamorous, and the fashionistas are annoying as hell. <laughs> so that's it for the postcards from Night City trailer breakdown. What did you think guys? Like what you see so far? Let me know below. Like always, do the standard YouTube stuff to help the channel out. And I'll be back with the gang's trailer breakdown and much, much more Cyberpunk 2077 content. Keep those eyes ready to go, friends.